Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Will and the AJ team for uh, giving me 15 minutes in front of this wonderful crowd. Um, well done for being here. You guys really can affect change. You're the guys that, to use an old school term, at the coalface, um, really getting things done. So bear with me for the next 10 or 15 minutes. It's going to look ugly at first, but it would cheer up towards the end. I was astounded when I saw this. Um, I just thought it was a brilliant cover. It said, wake up. And if you saw the digital one, it was a ticking clock. And I really think it was wake up, not just the, to the construction industry or architects, but obviously to humankind. So we've had quite a lot go on this year and very quickly. And for a lot of people, this is a, a very inspiring young, la young lady. And to some, some people, like Toby Young, an irritant. And then the adults got involved just when our politicians went on their Easter vacation. And it was amazing because Parliament declared there was a climate emergency. And then, of course, we did. And the architectural educators do. There's uh, something like 1,500 architectural educators uh, declaring as well. And then every local authority you can think of is doing it. And even the Pope had a go last week. So civilization requires energy, but energy use must not destroy civilization. But why should we care? Well, mass extinction is pretty scary. I mean, these are just two species we lost last year. Lost. And this is a bit of protected rainforest. Obviously not very well protected. And if we don't do anything about it, this is a sort of rather crude map of what the end of the 21st century looks like in terms of habitable space. Green is habitable, red is not. So it's going to get scary. So why us? Well, if we take it to the UK, the UK consumes 600 million tons of products a year. And about a third of those are thrown away every year, 200 million tons of waste. And 60% of that we help to create in the demolition, the building, the maintenance, and the deconstruction of buildings. The construction industry con consumes nearly all the world's cement, 26% of aluminium, 50% of steel, and 25% of plastic. This is why we need to care. That earlier slide is actually part of our supply chain. That's rare earth minerals and not so rare minerals that we use in the construction industry. It's part of our supply chain. These people work for us, and we're not doing it quite properly yet. We've improved since I first used this slide. It was um, for every five houses we create, one house worth of surplus material and uh, demolition waste went to landfill. It's now six to seven houses, so we're actually doing quite well in the terms of reducing waste. But we have only one planet. It's finite. So we've got to forget the word growth. That's just not working. However, our government is hell-bent on us squeezing the last little bits of fossil fuels out of the environment. And, you know, this is a, coal, a new coal mine that got planning approval earlier this year. It's going to start on site at the end of the year. So this is difficult. We're getting mixed messages. So what next? Perhaps. Perhaps. Well, we've got these guys to rely on anyway. And I do think that is Toby Young looking on the outside in, wondering if they'll let him in after all, and he could be a, an advisor. I think we're at this stage. Is it worth it? Is it worth the effort? David Chipperfield was on um, Radio 4 this morning, being really articulate and clear about the climate emergency. Apart from one thing where I disagree with him, he said it was too late. It was too late to do anything. It's not too late. So humankind needs to learn how to manage planet Earth's resources. So it's all about managing resources. And guess who does that? We do. It's the construction industry. It's architects and contra contractors who manage resources. We choose what we build buildings out of. We have a supply chain. We know where stuff comes from, and we know where it ends up. So we've got a lot of challenges. Not least the oil industry still putting in about 200 million plus a year, lobbying not against the idea of climate change, but against the idea of when we need to do something about it. Now, this is within an environment where last year, 
30% of all the energy generated, uh, sorry, used in our mains, uh, the national grid, was actually renewable. Christmas Day last year, nearly 50% of our energy that we consumed on Christmas Day, which is when we consume energy, was renewable energy. At the moment, it's looking like by the end of this year, it'll be 39%. And that's before the biggest wind turbine, wind farm in the world, just off the coast of Cumbria, has been switched on. We don't hear enough about this sort of stuff. Stuff is happening. RAP, the government organization, reckon that 20% of the construction industry is already a closed loop circular economy. We're hitting the ground running. So we have to change the way we do things, and we have to do that today, not tomorrow. This is an interesting book, Cradle to Cradle. Most of you may have read it, you may not have done. But it's all about doing good, not less bad. So forget being sustainable or 10% sustainable, 80% less bad. You've just got to redo the way you do things. And people in this room know how to unpack current practice and repack it so we can have a positive in a relationship with planet Earth. The other thing that Braungart says is that we're not aliens. We don't have to feel guilty about being on planet Earth. We are part of Earth's natural ecosystems. But in this world of cradle to cradle, where things are in perpetual use, waste equals food for either the biosphere or the tech sphere. So either things that can be composted and real food for the natural world, or our iPhones and all those other things that are really difficult. We're in a world at the moment where it's easier to get a gold out of a ton of iPhones than it is out of a ton of the best gold ore you can get. So why are we sending people underground to dig? It's all above ground. So we have to drastically reduce our reliance on raw materials. And we have to fall out of love with concrete. Honest. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. That's the first laugh. <laughs> but, not the <laughs> but not the last. You should see the next slide. No. Um, no honestly, that is, that's what's going up at the moment opposite the School of Architecture. And I can't believe how much concrete is there where it doesn't really need to be. It does a very good job, but it needs to stay in the ground. It doesn't need to be above the ground so much. And we've got to reduce the amount of flying we do. And we've got to stop eating meat. And I eat meat. We've all got to change the way we exist. But there are huge opportunities here. And I think this is what isn't mentioned enough. So this is where I have to read a bit. So I believe it will be the competing city-states and regions that will give us all hope, not governments pre preoccupied with 22 other big issues before they can think about climate change. With over 50% of the world's population now residing in cities, they are now the main driver for economic and system change and have the potential to power a successful circular economy. In 2017, the London Waste and Recycling Board, who knows who they are? Put your hand up. You will do. They are letting contracts for um, Old Park Royal at the moment. Elwab, they published their circular economy route map for, the, for London, which outlined, and I quote, a vision of a capital city thriving through the adoption of principles of circular economy, an economy which keeps products, components, and materials at their highest end value at all times. The report identified that by 2036, a circular economy could provide London with net benefits of up to seven billion a year, uh, annually, and with up to 12,000 new jobs in the area of reuse remanufacturing and materials innovation. And the EU circular economy package identified similar figures, but you know, quantumly bigger for Europe. Last year, next slide please. Last year, California overtook the UK as the world's fifth biggest economy. Governor Jerry Brown ordered civil servants to put in place legislation to make California carbon neutral by 2045, and thence after to be a net carbon sink. Amsterdam has pledged to be waste-free by 2035. Last August, 19 cities, including Paris and Tokyo, vowed to make all buildings carbon neutral by 2030 and to retrofit all others by 2050. Last year, 620 cities and 122 regions have reported climate actions to the CDP, which is a watchdog, 
quoting The Economist, more than seven, uh, sorry, 800 firms worth almost $17 trillion have joined the We Mean Business Coalition to reduce their carbon footprint. The door is waiting to be put. So how can we change? I'm just going to show you a couple of really easy things. Cities are now material stores for the future. It's our resource for future buildings. Lacatan and Vassal in Paris. This is the before and after shot of a new, so-called new tower. Instead of knocking it down, they just took the old cladding off and bolted on new winter gardens that gave the building new insulation, additional floor space, more natural light, more ventilation, no lighting of those rooms during the day. Up it went. The, the occupants didn't even have to leave the apartments. This bit more hardcore, literally. Instead of smashing up 20th century brick buildings, the Lendeker Group in Denmark get an angle grinder to them and make new buildings. So that's reuse instead of recycling. This house burnt down on the South Downs about 18 months ago. It's the highest house on the South Downs. You can't get to it, hence it burnt down. So we're, my practice of reusing those burnt bricks and stuff to make the new building. And you do something called a resource map. You find your site, and then you look for materials to serve the site. Rota do it, and have been doing it for 10 years at least. You read these slides from the top left to the bottom right. They deconstruct the buildings that we normally think have to be demolished. And it's hard work. They're deconstructing the World Trade Center in Brussels at the moment. And that's it coming down. And it's all sold already. So there's money to be made. Did anybody see Zo uh, Zoe Laughling on BBC4? Uh, last year, they dug up a 1980s uh, landfill site. Even the newspapers hadn't rotten. They hadn't decomposed. So these are the new mines. So what I say we've got to do is mine the Anthropocene. Rework the already produced stuff, the human layer of stuff, whether it's ocean plastic, landfill, existing buildings, and rewild our natural world. And I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much.